Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the Cambridge Los Angeles showroom in West Hollywood. And I'm here with Jeff Gao with his movie, Knowing Nothing Cold. Let's take a look at a clip. Congratulations on your feature. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I could go as far as saying it's one of the best uh, coming of age stories I've ever seen on, on, on the movement in the, in the bigger picture. And uh, thank you so much for sharing. But for anyone that hasn't seen your film, tell us a brief synopsis. Uh, thank you for the compliment. Of course. Um, the, uh, the film is about four main, there's four main uh, characters in it and mm -hmm. it's a coming of age story. They're teenagers in the Midwest and 1970s, late 1970s, and uh, the movie is based on a lot of my memories of mm -hmm. growing up in Iowa, um, and it's, I would, I would say it's just a, a kind of loose arc of, you know, a couple days in their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, obviously, you know, you, you, you wrote this as well, mm -hmm. um, so, and again, comes back from sort of personal memories, so obviously, where, where did the kind of inspiration for you to look back at what you experienced in your life and think, right, I want to make a film out of this? Where did that kind of come from? Well, these are, you know, cherished memories of mine. Uh, I don't know if cherished is the right word because they're, they're memories that have stuck with me my whole life mm -hmm. uh, because they, I see them as a combination of really beautiful uh, events and odd and, mm -hmm. and kind of, I guess, kind of frightening or just mm -hmm. intense memories, mm -hmm. you know, that won't go away, that I, um, you know, seem to be telling those stories over and over to the people around me. Uh, and I have a daughter who was at the time um, going into her senior year mm -hmm. uh, of high school and uh, I had been making movies with her and her friends mm -hmm. before that when they were younger. and. Um, I think I had always wanted to make a movie about that time in my life, and it seemed like that was the right moment too, when yeah. she was that age, and it, it, it was her being that age made me relive that, that yeah, time in moments, my life and try yeah. to understand what she was going through. I yeah, mean, um, I'm not. What a good dad you are! Hey, no, that's awesome. I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say she was. She's a great kid, but mm -hmm. she was a little bit difficult at mm -hmm. that time, and I wasn't a natural father, and I was kind of grasping at ways to to try to be a better father to her. I don't know if 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 making a movie <laughs> about I, I all my mishaps that. helped that, but but it really brought those memories home and made me made me uh, dredge up a lot of memories. Mm. I, I think what's also refreshing too is that you know. And I think refreshing, but for, for kids of today, is to sort of see like, hey, we kind of were going through the similar things that you were going through, just in a different time zone. And certainly, you know, we we were doing things that we shouldn't do, and and and, and you know, doing things, uh, you know, just as teenagers would do in in, in that, that time and and today as well. Um, you know, what was so great though is just, you know, I felt like you just gave us a, a beautiful cinematic experience, and I think that really goes down to your, you know, great talent as a, as a as a writer and a director. Um, you know, obviously, firstly, before I get into deep about that, um, your cast were brilliant. Now, you know, there's, it's kind of a rarity to get this unified, you know, young cast that have such a, a great chemistry and you can really understand what they're going through in their themes. I mean, I think, you know, you can look at casts in the past, like, you know, look at the Goonies and even today, like Stranger Things, everyone's talking about a great cast. I really thought your cast was so wonderful and just had so much about them individually without even speaking too much, but just you could just feel the energies of each other. Mm. How did you assemble your great cast together? Because they really were just something else. Uh, I think I got really lucky for yeah. one thing. Um, I, I, you know, I, was, I struggled with that because I, I put out a casting call 
you know, and, and we didn't have a, much of a budget, so mm -hmm. I had to be smart about it. And so the first place I went was my daughter's high school, which is a performing arts, um, mm -hmm. or it's, it's an arts high school mm -hmm. that has a performing arts department in it. And I went to the theater department chair and asked him if I could, you know, do a casting call from among his students. So mm -hmm. I did that, and it was really uh, shocking to me how bad it was not the kids but it was they were theater actors mm -hmm. and it was so over the top it yeah. was just like yeah <laughs> it, 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 it's, you know, it's a different like experience it was, in front of I, camera I, I to the stage yeah, yeah 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 but i did get two um members of the cast from that casting call mm -hmm. uh, the oldest um i think the oldest students that came were really good and they were used to being in front of uh, cameras and so one of them was Sion, who played the older sister of um, the Stevie character. And the other was Nancy Kimball, who plays one of the friends who's having coffee with the other two characters when the pervert uh, mm -hmm. strikes. And um, But after that, um, I can't remember exactly how it went, but I decided to run a screen test of Jasmine and my daughter Emily because we had worked together before and they, they you know they were good and and Jasmine I knew was um, you know she's just a really good learner and she she can kind of do anything and my daughter uh, I knew had a certain screen presence but I wasn't sure how she would get into like a deeper kind of acting because mm -hmm. I had made these movies with them but they were they were kind of glorified family mm -hmm. movies real goofy and funny mm -hmm. like I just described to you about the drag mm -hmm the drag mm -hmm. the younger brother as a drag queen um so you know i got those those two seemed to be working out and then i just started thinking about their friends the boys that they were hanging out with i got gabe who they went to school with mm -hmm. and he just had this certain presence that i, I thought was appropriate mm -hmm. for the dean character yeah the great job the hardest one to cast was the tough kid mm -hmm. uh, the stevie character mm -hmm. and um tyler who ended up playing him i hadn't seen since like uh, since they were in second grade, third grade or so. Oh, wow. And, and he was this very interesting kid. He was wonderfully curious when he was young. Mm -hmm. And then I had just seen him a few months before that coming out of like a martial arts tournament. So I yeah. knew, I knew <laughs> you he, knew he could got, fight, yeah. you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And he, he needed to have that, that kind of edge to him. So yeah, he certainly did. Yeah, so I called him up and he was a little bit baffled but he was game for mm -hmm. coming out. And so we would get together, this was months before we started shooting, and we would just have these kind of open-ended rehearsals, like mm -hmm. improv rehearsals. I mean, I was doing uh, some acting classes and uh, with a director that really um, just leaned heavily on improv. And so mm -hmm. we'd try some of, the, some of the exercises that I had done, and mm -hmm. it, they had a lot of fun, you know? Mm -hmm. like it, when it came down to that cast and directing them for performance, it, it, it all came down, and maybe this is an obvious thing for directors, I don't know, I, I learned it through this, but it was all a matter of how to make them relaxed. Yeah, you, you, know, did, how to you really just relax did, but them. you just did that, honestly, like, mm -hmm. I, it was, I, I, there were so many moments I enjoyed, and it was just sometimes, like, firstly, I loved the way you just played with the camera, and, you know, just, even you know moments like in the cinema and you've got this very you know interesting light and go to the movie being played but you're like yeah. working out their reactions and what they're feeling going through mm -hmm. and then when you just like you know again through you know maybe it's possibly through improv but you know, I was just watching the characters and you know uh, Dean would just put his hand on, on, on the shoulder and you just see his little elements in those moments but I think I think one thing that I that I enjoyed that we don't, we, we sort of tend to be so quick in how we move things forward in, in a story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, w you just kind of left the camera there mm -hmm. beyond the time when you'd expect the camera to go. And we just saw so much and, and it just gave us an extra insight. Was that something that was important to you? Was that something that's your style or, because, you know, it really felt us, I really felt I was there experiencing. And, and again, you know, a lot of it was unscripted that you just saw within their emotions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I think first, uh, I'm just a huge 70s American mm -hmm. cinema fan. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what I grew up on. And so I think my aesthetic is a lot slower than, mm. you know, a modern, a contemporary aesthetic that way. And so I want to see long takes and, mm. I, and I really um, have probably more patience than 
I should have. <laughs> for, We're all gonna work for Jeff because he's got a lot of patience <laughs> on set. There you go. <laughs> but then, you know, with, um, I think with the stuff that ended up staying in the cut, I mean, it came down to, to, to my frame of mind when, when I was editing. Mm -hmm. And it was just that I knew that the, the movie wasn't, you know, it wasn't that, it, it, it really wasn't a story based, you know, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't have a really tight, uh, plot arc or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it and so I could feel that the the value of the of the thing lay in the kind of in that contemplative you mm -hmm. know of being alone as a kid yeah and that time thing. frame of, of that time period that, 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 yeah. that you go we've all been through we've all mm -hmm. been through that time period mm -hmm. um, where we've had to tear down our posters of our on the walls mm -hmm. because you know we're moving to a, a new entity of our lives and this kind of scary factor of growing up and feeling mm -hmm. like oh you, as you grow up you, you you know you move away from your friends and you know the responsibility of growing into being an adult and I thought you captured that you know really well and I think everybody doesn't matter whether it was the 70s or today or, or pr other, other decades but people could relate to that as mm -hmm. well no matter what time that it was. Yeah, um, so w w what was what was kind of the ch biggest challenge you felt in, 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 making, in making this uh, feature independent film, which is a remarkable thing as it is anyway? I don't know. I think, you know, I, I, I was probably helped by my ignorance of how much work it would take. Yeah. You know, because I had made movies before then by myself mm -hmm. and on weekends. You know, the one before that took like a year and a half just shooting on weekends mm -hmm. and, you know, putting it together finally. And... This one I really wanted to shoot con in a concentrated period, um, which we got done for the most part. But I guess what was really, uh, what floored me was how exhausting it would be. Mm. You know, like I remember the, f the second day of shooting, I couldn't remember, for the, I tried, I couldn't remember what we had shot the day before. <laughs> it's all the blur, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's, you know, even with the small crew that I had and the, and the you know, the cast, it, it, the cast kind of gets big, but mm -hmm. at the time it wasn't that big. Um, you know, with that many people asking you to make decisions on everything, on every single thing, it's really just uh, A lot. exhausting. Yeah. You know? And it's hard to, to I think I think really good directors learn quickly how to, you know, just ignore people. Yeah. Ignore questions or to, to really get their A D or whatever mm -hmm. to take care of stuff that doesn't that isn't the crucial stuff. Because right. it, you know, it came down to what was important was to direct these performances and and I was used to like wanting to see what I had in the frame mm -hmm. as a DP or whatever, making sure the sound was good, and, you mm -hmm. know, like learning how to trust people to do their jobs yeah. was a really cool thing. And, yeah. and then just to have the luxury of just concentrating on one actor's delivery, you know, like to try to, to, try to get inside their head enough to, to allow them to explore, mm -hmm. you know, the possibilities and yeah. everything. And, and that was another really um, interesting thing was I think because I hadn't directed performance to that degree and because the cast hadn't acted, uh, they didn't have that much experience acting, each kid was a very different, um, it was a very different thing directing each kid. Mm -hmm. They're all very different. They're, they're, all, they're very all very different, different and they yeah. all learn and, mm -hmm. and, and are, are, you know, are responsive to different mm -hmm. things. And I just had to try to understand, you know, what that was mm -hmm. in each person. I think that's is the bread and butter of yeah. the director too. I mean, absolutely even with pros, you know. And not to mention as well, when you're making a coming of age story and these girls and guys are going through their coming of age of their yeah, life. Yeah. I mean they're they've also they're self conscious yeah, about yeah. it. And it's you know they're sort of living within this story within their own within their own lives. I mean, you know, again the attention to detail you have to have when you're making, you know, a, a film in a certain period. I mean you even had you know, the 1970 Playboys, you know, I mean, how, how difficult was it, you know, to, to kind of create that sort of 1970s feel in 2000 and, you know, in the 2000s? 
it was, during challenges? It was challenging, and there were some holes in it. Yeah. If you watch it closely and you're looking for... Oh, no, we weren't. No, on, you, I felt like I was there. I was, I was ready to go back to the 70s, okay, cool. so... You have me I mean, going. some of that stuff was a lot of fun. I bet, yeah. We would just yeah. go, we would... We the would, haircuts were awesome. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I mean, to, to, to watch my daughter feather her hair back like Farrah <laughs> yeah. Fawcett Majors. I, I was <laughs> That's there. great, right? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, but getting the props was fun, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, the, finding the Playboys was hilarious because I went to this place by my house that recycles like art supplies, and I had seen some playboys there a long time before that mm -hmm. and i was i went up to the loading dock and i was like you know do you have any 70s like porn like yeah. playboys <laughs> and he was and he just looked at me with this defeat and like he goes how much do you want and it, uh, just had <laughs> crates of it you know oh wow yeah like, oh, that's great so, but again those things yeah. you know those element all of those elements that you know create the atmosphere of that time period is is is, is essential um having made this film and and you know again where you kind of almost decided to make this film and how you did, what's it like to go from that journey and then take it to you know, being selected for New Filmmakers LA, having it in front of an audience? What's that feeling like? It's exciting. It's, it's kind of scary because I know every second of this film now and it, it, you know, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know if it gets easier for people, but um, when I screen the film, I'm you know, I seem to be, be getting more and more hypercritical of it, mm -hmm. and it's a relief when it's over. And mm -hmm. But luckily, the places that I've shown it, um, there are always a handful of people that are really pretty moved by it. Yeah. And, um, and it's very satisfying, and I love, I love being able to, um, you know, bring the cast up and have them... Uh, you know, bask in the light yeah. a little bit because, you know, none of them are really going into acting at this point, but they, I think it, they cherish the yeah. experience of having made the movie. And, yeah. and for don't all of Don't forget us, it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. And, 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 and I don't, you know, I think I tried to express it last night, but the sense of discovery that we all had making the movie, I think, uh, was the really special thing. And I don't mm. know if that will ever be the case again, you know, mm. like, uh, I, 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 you know, it's like I know what I'm doing a mm -hmm. little bit more now, but, mm -hmm. but with that, you lose a little bit of that yeah. uh, open-endedness of, of making a movie, you know? Well, I mean, I, I felt it was, uh, you know, a very, I felt very emotional and satisfying uh, experience, and, and, uh, and I know that a lot of people felt that as well that I've spoken to, so okay. great credit to you. Um, just to finish, what... Do you have a piece of advice that you may have, have yourself that you've learned as a, as a, as a filmmaker mm -hmm. that you would give to other filmmakers to go out there and make it? Is there something that you've learned or that you have? Don't make a period piece <laughs> and keep your locations down to a minimum. <laughs> uh, that's the practical advice. Um, right, there you go. I think on a more serious note, I let's see. You know, I think it's an obvious, it's a cliche kind of, but uh, don't be afraid of the obstacles that are in front of you. I think the mm -hmm. obstacles are a good thing a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. You know, like you need... Very important. Yeah, you need a little bit, you need to be, that's what the word ingenious means, you know, mm -hmm. like you have to use ingenuity to get around mm -hmm. problems and somehow that makes things, it sets you up for a more unique mm -hmm. uh, vision in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, I always think of how all the CGI used in films today make uh, so many movies look like they come out of the same place, you know, because they're all funneled down through this computer. Right. And then there's just a handful of choices within that, mm -hmm. you know, in some ways. And you look back at, you know, for that, uh, to use that example, you look back at movies before CGI mm -hmm. and the way they got special effects mm -hmm. often was really unique and weird and cool and, mm -hmm. and, and personal, you yeah. know? And um, I think the same goes for just the way to tell a story or the way to get a film to hold together or something, you mm -hmm. know? It's gotta be, it's gotta be your own thing. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely agree. Um, Jeff, you're a very talented filmmaker and thank you so much for uh, bringing your film to us and uh, we look forward to seeing many more, so thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs>